You ready? All right. There we go. We started. So I read some dope, right? And it's, 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 I take that back. I didn't read something dope. I read something that was really informative, right? And the more I look into it, like I have my own personal experience, but I trip off that people don't actually take in, take these things into account, right? So this comes from this website called The Travel. And it says, it is unclear why the Love Parade decided a narrow tunnel entrance into the festival was a smart idea for this one. And the 21 dead feel the same way. The festival grounds reached maximum capacity and the police responded by closing off the entrance. They asked people to leave calmly, but the crowd turned into a stampede as they went in the other direction. This is a tragedy to festival goers. This is a tragedy that the festival goers will never forget. And as the love parade continues, as the love parade continues, they refuse to forget what happened that fateful year. 500 to 1,000 people were injured. This is the love parade in 2010. Never so heard it's of another one. one. Is that Travis Scott's event? No, no. no. It's called the love parade. Oh, the love parade. Whose event is that? Um, I, I'm not sure. All right. So I, I think I, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but there's a festival in Morocco. I think it's pronounced Mawazine or Mawazine. But this festival in Morocco, right in 2009, actually ended in the deaths of 11 people after a stampede trampled them. There were 70,000 fans packed into the stadium to see Adelaide Stati. I think that's how it's pronounced. Abdelaze. Abde, you know. And after the performance, the police failed to secure exits for the masses. The people who died became trapped beneath the metal security fence that toppled over concert goers. Over, that's what me. I thought it had happened. Yeah, fence that thing. toppled over after concert goers decided to make their own exits. The police did not intervene, and the fun festival ended in a deadly disaster. Well, you know, there have been several instances of um these things going sideways. Um, it takes a lot of logistics and planning to put on one of these events. And I generally would say that whatever the, um, you know, because the sheriffs and the um, fire department and all those guys usually come through and do a walkthrough. So I'm pretty sure that these people are warned beforehand that they may have these little things. Now, sometimes it may go off without a hitch. Sometimes you get stuff like what happened with um, Travis Scott's thing. And I'm glad you, you actually brought that up, right? No ceilings, GL, my boy Peter, my manager and the owner of, of uh, Digital Soapbox, one of the best, if not the greatest podcasting company in the world. Still, Big Still is on with us. What's happening still? We in this place. Oh, man, we here, man. I see. Um, I, don't, I don't got conjoled into being a regular, but it's cool because I told Peter, it's just like having a conversation anyway. This, we just doing the shit we talk about on the phone. That's what make our shit great. That's what make yeah. me and Peter shit dope because it's just a conversation. It ain't an interview. So the point I was saying was you had no idea who was on stage, right, when mm -hmm. the incident at the love parade happened. Notice they did not know who was on stage when the concert happened. When the people died, when the incidents happened, you have no idea who was on stage. Same thing with this festival in Morocco, you know, last decade as well. Mm -hmm. You had no idea, right, who was on stage. They talked about who could have been there, who was next, but they did talk about who was on stage. Right now, if I ask you about the Route 91 Harvest Festival in Las Vegas, that was in 2017, right, where 60 people was gunned down at this festival. Gunned right? down? Yeah, gunned down in Las Vegas. Shooting thing? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Caesars or whatever. Yeah. yeah. OK, and it was over 800 people injured at this festival. Do either one of you guys know who was on stage? No, I did no. at the time. Well, you know what? what was the country 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 Western station? It was a country Western guy that won in Vegas, correct? It's mm -hmm. a country Western concert. Uh, yeah. uh, excuse me, it's a country was Western it, festival. Um, was it, um, what's the girl's daddy? Um, no, nope, okay. it wasn't him. It wasn't him. And you know why it wasn't him? Because the media didn't say it was his fault. 
Because the media well, didn't know. say, let me finish, because the media didn't say, well, he didn't tell people to duck and run and blah, blah, blah. What happened was he got the hell out of there. <laughs> Jason Aldean. Right. And and I don't want to compare this incident to that incident, because what happened at the Astro World situation is unique because excuse, rather it's not unique. Somewhere near 45 to 50 festival goers die every year. Roughly 90 percent die the exact same way. You know, this is stuff. This is research that us as parents do. When you got teenage kids, you do stuff like this. That's why. I don't let Jasmine attend open concerts like that. I, I never let Chris go to those things. You know, I was pretty, you know, I'm pretty open with my kids, G, going places and experiencing things. But mm. what I usually do, bro, like, I almost cried today when I read this. Um, Dad, he was, he saw pictures of his son at the incident, right? He noticed his shoes and he said, well, maybe he was asleep. He started trying to like compartmentalize it in his head. Well, maybe he was asleep, but he kept saying, no. He's dead. I can feel that he's gone, that he's not here anymore. So he's calling the police, um, filing a missing conscience report. Nobody wants their 14 to 16 year old son or daughter to leave home and go somewhere to have fun with their friends. And you hear about them getting stumped to death later on, you know? But, but again, it's one of those things that if you look at the history of these type of festivals, this is the norm. Now, some exactly. people say, yeah, well, don't go. Yeah, some people will say, "Oh, that don't make it right." Well, if that's custom, right? If 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 this is your traditional idea of what happened at festivals, the rowdiness, the freeness, to move around, to be wild, some things bad happen. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to be financially liable. I'm not saying you don't have to be responsible for everything going on. That's not the point I'm saying. What I'm saying is, I've never seen such a target painted on one person's back. Uh, who would that be, Travis Scott? I, man. And Literally. Then you, you know, but that's the thing with these lawyers. Um, we're living in such a litigious society right now that usually, like let's say if someone sued um, James McDonald, right? Not mm -hmm. only would they sue James McDonald, they would sue Digital Soapbox, they would sue iHeartMedia, they would sue Black Effect, they would probably even sue your ass, Glasses and Peter, if they found <laughs> I was on this podcast. They sue everyone around, and usually, as the case goes along, people usually drop off. They usually find that they don't have no liability in certain things. Like, I don't understand where Drake plays at in the equation with that. Was he a part of the event, or was he just a guy a act that was down there just to perform? Well, he he was he performed on stage, but no, he wasn't a part of the promotions. He wasn't even promoted as part of the concert. As, excuse me, as part of the festival. And that's what I'm saying. So. And I get it, man, but I would be thinking at the time, me as a parent, the last thing I would be thinking about doing is filing a lawsuit on somebody because that's not going to bring my child back. I would be pissed off. I would be angry. But then again, I would probably be more mad at myself because you know what happens to these things. And it's not just the violence or the stuff like this. You have a lot of incidents of rape down there. Man, you got a lot of incidents of rapes at these festivals. Um, it's a lot of fighting, a lot of bullying going on. It's just a lot of bad stuff because it's a lot of freedom, and usually it's not enough law enforcement there to protect it. You know, for every law enforcement, you know, you may have for every staff pro security dude, you may have one police officer for every twenty staff pro police dudes. And those staff pro dudes there just to get their little hundred bucks and go and home. It's really, and it's really nothing you can do. That's the point. It's Did meant guys... to be unruly. Did you guys see the thing on Instagram with Steve-O and um, the Insane Clown Posse? No, but I've I've actually performed at an Insane Clown Posse festival, so that's a whole uh, other story. Very I'm sure of that. I'm going to tell yeah. you about that. Tell you about that. 3-6 was there. So yeah, I I'm guess, because Steve-O dot 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 version used to go to clown school after he went to college and said that ICP is not real clowns. And they got all pissed off, so they're going to beat his ass when they see him. And he was like, didn't remember having said that. So he called him and they talked and then they invited him down. So he goes to the thing. And as he's going there, he, he wanted to get that clown tattoo that they have. Yeah, and juggling. apparently, yeah. They call it the hatchet man. Exactly. I guess the, the insane clown posse fan base nation, whatever the hell they call themselves. It's called the juggalos and juggalos. The, the gigolo and juggalos. 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 Yeah, juggalos. Get that shit right, because they will fuck you up. Yeah, there, there's a federal injunction against them. 
It's like a RICO federal injunction. Yeah. It's very bizarre. I never heard of anything like that. So I'm glad you brought up ICP, right? Who was some of the coolest guys in the world. Shout out to them brothers. Them, them motherfucking white boys fucking funny and great. Um, so they invited me to perform at a festival that they have called the gathering. Right? Oh, you did the gathering? This was the thing. I did two gatherings. That's dope. So let me tell you about the gathering, right? It's it's tens of thousands of motherfuckers, right? And so this particular year was in this little small town in Indiana. So me and Head, we on a plane, right? Me and Head going, we excited because we heard about the gathering. Tech Nine told us about the gathering. Um, everybody talked about the gathering. So we were invited. So we have to fly into Atlanta and drive two and a half hours to get to the place. But they're paying like 20,000 bucks. Like they overpaid. I'm like, then it's cool. So long story short, we fly into Vegas. I mean, excuse me, we fly into Atlanta. The cold part is I remember it so well because it was a storm in Georgia at the time and we couldn't land. It was too much traffic on the ground. So we mm -hmm. had to fly in a circle. A circle. Like, mm -hmm. so we kept flying through a storm cloud. And there was a lady on the fucking plane, bro, that was so scared because of what was going to happen. She thought the plane was going down. She thought the plane would go down. So we're flying in this circle. We had to fly through the storm cloud probably 10 of 20 times. That sounds Every like the flight from the Denzel Washington movie. Are, are you <laughs> sure it wasn't the same flight? No, no, I wish it was. Okay. Because they at least it would have been over and at least it would have been down. <laughs> so this lady prepared as head next time you talk to cuz. This lady, bro. Every time we got through that cloud, she was hysterical, ah, like crying. But it was like over. So she would calm down and just be panting until we went through the cloud again. Right. And as here, like it take head to explain it. So we get down. We finally land. We on the ground. We drive. We drive to this festival. You have to pull in. Right. You own this property. Thousands, tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands. They offering your motherfucking ass whatever your motherfucking wildest man. It's women trying to give you pussy. Hey, do you want to fuck? Hey, do you want some pussy? I think you're cute. Would you like some pussy? It's people trying to sell you some pussy. It's all kind of crazy shit going on. It's like you just went into a whole nother world of shit. Motherfuckers passed out. Motherfuckers loaded. Motherfuckers dead. But it's just crazy, right? So when we're performing, right, we get on stage. It's thousands of people got to have an in-ear monitor because it's so many people, right? You can't hear. It's lights in your face, so you can't see. So I'm looking at all this stuff Travis is going through, right? Because I know what it's like to be at that kind of festival. And again, we've done a couple different things like this, and that's the idea. The unruliness is why people like festivals. Festivals don't have 100,000 seats. Well, you sit next to each other and you pick a row and you just sit down and, you know, you, you're watching a fucking This is not a fucking concert. It's not this James place, Taylor at Staples. Yo, this is not the Hollywood Bowl, bro. This is the motherfucking rebellion. And so when I listen to people talk about what happened at Astro World, and I just know they have no idea of what's going on. They have zero idea of what's going on. They don't have no idea. And they just talk, oh, well, Travis could have did this. Travis could have did that. Travis and I'm gonna, do shit. And I'm gonna read something back to you about. I'm gonna read something back to you about the love parade. It is unclear why the they. It is unclear why the actual promotion, the the, the promotion of the of the festival, decided a narrow tunnel into the festival was a smart idea for this one. Twenty one people died. The festival grounds reach maximum capacity, like what happened at Astro World, and the police, not security, the police responded by closing off the entrance. The police asked people to leave calmly, but the crowd turned into a stampede as they went into the tunnel. This thing is made for people to be unruly. Now, I'm not saying again that people are not liable, but the problem is when you got all these people, I'm not feeling how they trying to make this little brother the whole face of this problem. This well, is know. life at the festivals. 
Well, you know, the, the fortunate part about it, she is um, those events, and I'm pretty sure Travis Scott got a pretty good team around him. I'm pretty sure he has a lot of insurance on that event. I'm pretty sure he had a, a, a super duper amount yeah, of is. insurance on that event. So it's probably Here, not here's, your, here's your number. $26 million. Mm-hmm. But the damages will exceed over a hundred million dollars. Oh wow. Well, that's his insurance, or that's that's the whatever. whole total insurance for the oh, okay. whole event. Well, I mean, I think you've answered your own question. I mean, like the the billion dollar enterprise will be more than happy to hide behind the million dollar enterprise. That's so all is, I'm it, is it that's it's all live I'm yeah, live nation? They like would much rather soil his name than soil their name because he might, you know, what's the rest of his career worth versus what's the next 10 years of gross revenue for them worth, you know? Well, well you know what? The, the thing about this, I was just talking with an attorney about Chris because, you know, Chris got a lot of stuff going on right now. You know, and we dealing a lot with insurance. Like, we have Chris Steele, so, so nephew Chris Steele is still son. He's a, a safety slash cornerback for Pure USC. Corner, perimeter corner, number eight. Soon to be a safety. Soon to be the best safety in NFL. Man, I he was hope. he was meant to be a safety. I don't care. But what anyway, he plays for USC. Him. He's super ill. So when he say Chris, this is what we talk about. Go ahead. But you know this guy. So we were meeting with this guy, and it's funny because um, Maria thinks like it, and she always thinks about the worst case scenario. That's my wife. You know, she always think about. The, she already had Chris with some above board car insurance, right? He told us a story about an NFL player. Um, I won't say his name. He was in the NFL. He was celebrating getting drafted in Chicago, right? Mm-hmm. So he had this party. Had his best friend that he grew up with. Best friend the whole wide world. There, His friend gets so drunk, he falls in a swimming pool and drowns and dies. So they party and nobody knows where this guy is at. He's under the water. Mm-hmm. But nobody knows. So they find him the next day. He winds up getting sued. Guess by who? By the mama. By his best friend's mama, his best friend's baby mama, and they sued him for a nice little amount of money. Um, the insurance covered it, but I'm pretty sure nowadays, man, you almost have to have way more above insurance than what you think you go need. Like by Chris having his own apartment now, dude, we got like a ten million dollar policy there, just be just in case somebody come in and slip and fall and they sue him. Because you don't have to, when you file a lawsuit with someone, you can file a lawsuit six months from now. If Jesus, if Glass has punched me in my face today, I could file a lawsuit six, seven months from now and mm-hmm. say I haven't been right since then. We we live in a day and age, man, where everybody is always the purse first. Something yeah, happened. Did Len Bias's mom sue the Boston Celtics for drafting Len? <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I definitely I, I doubt believe it. the answer is no. But but you know the thing is, man, like I said, we live in a litigious society, so you have to protect yourself. And I can't imagine Travis Scott because see, it's just not liability on him. I'm pretty sure the venue has a huge amount of insurance too. So I think yeah, that's, that's what I was trying, trying to do. ask. It's not but it's not going to be enough insurance. It's gonna be severely not enough. You know what I think on some of that stuff? I think some of it is over-exaggerated. And I'm not talking about the people that died. I'm talking about as far as the damage. Where'd they come up with the number $100 million? Is that what the, what, what's being it's asked? Like, they're just a fucking that's blank piece saying. of land. That's what they're, 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 they're asking. I mean, that's what they're going to get. But my thing so, is this. It's an empty piece of land. What, what could be on there that's worth $100 million with the land? Did they crack the earth? Just just human capital damage. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Um, They said it exceeds $100 million. So, yeah. again, now you have, and this is what I'm saying, like right where... They're trying to settle for 30, whatever the hell. Well, this is what's weird, right? So now they're publishing articles. And now it's turning into a whole schmear campaign on Travis and his brand, right? So it's like now there's a man who was paralyzed at a 2017 Travis Scott concert, extremely upset over Astro World tragedy, lawyer says. He's not upset about him, about his festival experience. He's upset about no. this festival experience. Yes. I just want to double check. Yep, yep. You know what the problem is, Gene? And, and this is more so <laughs> turn to an episode about these file ass lawyers, man, these attorneys. It's not the attorneys. It, it's it's no, listen, these okay. attorneys are the people that give these people the ideas to go where we're gonna sue and go after everyone, even Drake. Fuck him. We're going after Drake too. Yeah, because we're like 
it's it's cheaper and faster to settle out. You you send a letter, you raise your hand, you contact a media outfit, publishes or whatever the hell they look. Just let's make this go away. We'll settle. You want ten? I'll give you five. Get the fuck out of here. And it's but just easier and faster for everybody. But Travis had already said that he was go um cover these people's expenses and bills. He already came out and said that all the money he made. Listen. So there now. So now the thing is. He was extremely upset and sad. This is the guy who was paralyzed in 2017. Cuz name is Cal Green. Cal so Green. So Cal says he was extreme. Well, his attorney says he was extremely upset and sad for the devastation to these people and to their families. The people who were killed and the people who were horribly injured. At the same time, he was really angry at Travis, at Travis' team, including his security, because Travis clearly hasn't learned from what has previously transpired or what previously occurred. He hasn't learned. The problem is festivals in general haven't learned. How is it tra- like how are we putting the burdens of all of this concept on track? Hell, since the 60s, the Rolling Stone put on a damn concert. The Rolling Stone put on a concert in the 60s in Northern California. They hired the Hell's Angels. I was going to say, that was that, that was the, the Monterey Bay Festival. And that was, yeah, the Hell's Angels did that. I don't remember that. Or I don't remember it. But it's, called the, it. it's called the Altamont Festival. That's what they called it. Mm-hmm. They were trying to compete with uh, Woodstock. They were trying to make the Woodstock of the West. Mm-hmm. And I think Janis Joplin show, I think. I just know when somebody's being railroaded and this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like to watch somebody be railroaded. Like he has a responsibility, no different than R Kelly having a responsibility. But what happens is when somebody trumps up the idea, right. To put somebody else like as the front man on the cross, like, yo, this whole thing should be with, with all due respect to live nation, this should be their motherfucking problem. But somehow they're saying he incited the stampede, but he didn't. You know, nine times out of 10, G, you know, you being an artist, I'm pretty sure Travis Scott is not the one that thought of, hey, I want to have an um, Astro World. I'm pretty sure somebody came to him and proposed this and said this would be a nice event. Yeah. So he was doing the thinking, okay, it'll be a event. Yeah. You know what well, I'm saying? I mean, it kind of was supposed to be his idea. Maybe somebody secretly came to him, but. You know, he had an album called Astro World, and Astro World was a was a theme park, a Six Flag theme park in Houston. So we just kind of did it, and so now what's crazy is right. So you got like right all of the white folks, right, all of the crackers, they just going, you know, crazy, right? They just going, oh, it's him, you know, blah blah blah, and he's it was negligence. They don't care that the Houston Police Department was there. They don't care security was there. Because they is sometimes every white person is not a cracker. But some some crackers is white folks. What's wrong with that? Damn, can I? You don't like the word cracker? No, I was just saying. I was just asking because I see Peter right there. You know, our white brother Peter. Peter's not a cracker. Peter's a ginger. Are you right? Peter's a ginger. I'm a member of the Rose. I'm a part of the Rose Gold community. He's Canelo's. (laughs) He's Canelo's distant cousin. This is the most vindicating show I'll ever be on. He's Canelo's distant cousin. Canelo Blanco or Canelo Americano. Canelo Alvarez, all all this, all Spain, that whole connection. But he's a part of the Rose Gold community. So again, just because somebody's, this is not like we're not finna go into that. That's a whole nother conversation. Why, why into, America has a very weird relationship with music. Like I was talking about this, I I think I did a show, my old show, years ago. Like if, like Ozzy Osbourne getting dragged into court because some kid listened to his music and killed himself or something like that or whatever the fuck or, or Marilyn Manson pick a guy whatever anybody yeah. dark anybody, sure, any, anybody. The, but 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 nobody freaks out about movies like you you watch Scarface go snort a line and pop somebody it's oh hey it's just a movie but for some reason there's a real funny relationship with it when it comes to music specifically as an art versus other forms of art and I'll never understand it Sure, you're right. I could just do Scarface and go do a line. Yeah, well, Scarface and Florence. All we do is snort lines and shoot people. I mean, for Christ's sake, for an hour and a half and vivid picture. Well, you got to think about where we at, right? Um, you and Peter were at, were at the Gangster Chronicles 100 episode event, right? Correct. So Congratulations homies, on that again. Oh, for sure. One, so one of the homies pull up, right? Dude in the wheelchair. He's going to be on the show. 
Mm-hmm. I see him rolling around the um the office park area, right? And I'm wondering, like, we over here, bro. What is you doing over there? And I saw this dude with him writing some stuff on paper. Then another motherfucker come up and get out the car. He pulls a wheelchair out the back of his car and get in the wheelchair. Now, this motherfucker was just perfectly driving, just fine. Then he pulls a wheelchair out when he get there, and he start doing the same thing. And I said, what is y'all doing? Like, what is y'all? Y'all looking to rent an office or something? They said, no, they don't have... um." They don't have handicap access here to get up on the thing. So that's $5,000. I'm going to make $20,000. And they called, both called this attorney. I'm not going to give y'all the names. They both called this attorney. Next thing you know, when I went back up to the same spot, you know that's where Big A is at, G. Yeah. You know, Big yeah. A's spot. They have the things Shout for the, the dog pound. For sure. So they got the things up there, now the ramps for the access, because both of them dudes filed a lawsuit. They set a lot of court. They may do get the things. But they do that for a living. They drive around the different places to make sure. Now, just imagine you a dude to own a store, and everybody that's a business owner is not rich. Some people just making a living. You get some asshole come up in a wheelchair, and they just not really hurt at that. Now, one of them dudes is really, you know, paralyzed from the waist down. But this other motherfucker, he just coming up. He lazy. That's what I call it. So he got a wheelchair. He rolling around, got a wheelchair in the back of his shit. He get out, files a lawsuit. You don't have these things, and they make a living. They, them dudes both make about one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year just from that one caper. And I said, "Man, damn, damn the pride! I must be doing something wrong in life by being honest, bro." Because it seemed like the crooked, corrupt motherfuckers always come up. Oh well, yeah, like we did in the last episode. You know, those who sell their soul. I mean, if you make it a sale, you're making a Man, profit. Feel me, making a profit. Well, but I was so- just people embarrassed to do that though. But so, so that's my issue with how white America is dealing with it. It's like us, oh, Travis, fault. Travis, Travis, Travis. Fuck Live Nation. Fuck, they got a concert to, to the next day. It's Travis. It's Travis. No disrespect. I love Live Nation. Shout out to all the homies there. But this is y'all responsibility. Y'all should be doing things to shelter Travis from these white folks. Okay, so now we go to the black part of America, right? And now, this is a part I can relate to, right? Spiritually, Pete don't believe in. God or any of that stuff right there. Like, you know, Pete, do you think you have a soul? Um, Not because yeah. you rose cold, but do you think you have a soul? I don't know. I don't really. Okay. Maybe okay. I, so you don't subscribe. Don't so in our community, we are spiritual people. That's we, we truly believe, you know, from the motherland, even here, that's how we're able to survive and endure all this shit. So we have a real spiritual connection, you know, minus all of the chosen discipline of religions. Right. The energy, right, of Travis, the energy of like a triple X rest in peace, um, and a Playboy Cardi comes across as batting for something outside of God, like outside of righteousness and goodness, right? And so there in our community right now, in the culture, there's a real conversation with what does he really represent? And now some tragic happened. You know what I mean? It's like, it was always questions initially about what he represented and blah, blah, blah. But now somebody dies, you know, immediately what's going on is like, yo, who is this guy batting for? Is, is he batting for that the guy on the other side? Is there any of that discussion with like, um, was with the uh, Kodak? No, no. Kodak you know, has none of the discussion. I just found the article. You mind if I read it? And I may share the video that's on here too. You mind? Okay, but 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 you, you see where we at though, right? See what we talking about? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I just found some, and this is about you know this is me going to a few minutes ago when you were talking about you know people just coming to judgment on Travis. Now this is in the uh, the Wall Street Journal. The Houston Fire Chief says rap star should have stopped the show before he did. Lawyers for hip hop stars said he didn't see the chaos. Travis Scott didn't know what was happening in a crowd of more than 50,000 fans at his show last Friday, lawyers for the hip hop artist said, and didn't take bigger steps such as halting the performance that the other music acts have employed to control crowds. Eight people ranging in age from 14 to 27 died amid a crowd surge during Mr. Scott's headline performance at the Astro World Festival in Houston. Now, they're bringing up some other stuff. Local authorities are investigating the crowd surge, the adequacy of security, efforts along with scenarios including the potential role of counterfeit pills possibly being laced with fentanyl. 
Now they bringing up something about some counterfeit pills. It ain't got shit to do with the price of tea in China. Well, some people say that's what caused the surge, right? Somebody was sticking people. It was on TMZ. It was a big deal. But but and 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 that is the same point, right? Where it's like Travis Scott should have did this, but nobody is gonna say Jason Aldean should have. Like they're saying he encouraged what happened, and it's like not true. There's never a video on the show like rush the front of the stage. I don't care who's in front of you. Like this is serious. They playing with somebody's life. But then now back to our community, right? Where it's all spiritual. So it's like you know some of the things. Like if you look at the opening entrance, right, of the actual park. Right. Um, it's like a super old school carnival thing that they've used forever. And um, it's based off a painting called Christ in Limbo. Christ in Limbo is a painting from the 16th century. And it's supposed to be a visual artist's description of hell. Look it up when you get a chance if y'all are listening. Christ in Limbo. And if you look at the Astro World entry, it's kind of marked the same way, which I do think a lot of people who was designing carnivals initially, it's, it's some different people. Like whether or not you believe in Satan or God, it's people who do. So very much they are following, just like it's some people who follow the light, feel me, and follow the righteousness of it. It's some people that follow the other side. So between the mouth of Moloch and 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 um Christ and Limbo painting. You know I mean, so it's always been questions like there's a portal. The idea behind it's a portal behind Travis on his set saying meet you on the other side. You know, so it's a thousand things that make the culture question. Like, yo, what's up with bro? And I and I keep trying to tell the brothers like this ain't the time for that. And it's hard because it's such a greater battle. But this isn't the time to, you know, we just allow R. Kelly for them to turn R. Kelly into fucking a slave trader. R. Kelly was fucking treated and prosecuted like a slave trader. It wasn't even a slave trader prosecuted like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is something that that man had, you know, pornography because he had sex or had video of having sex with a 15 year old, or whatever. This His case is a six or seven year sentence. They have been able to trump it up into 20 and 30 years. And I keep telling the brothers, this is the same thing that could happen with Travis. This could be some long term shit. Like they're already scratching him from every concert. They already mistreating him. He's guilty before any trial. I mean, he's guilty. So this whole astral world has just been going crazy, left and right, just crazy. And it's like, I'm a spiritual person. So I always have had questions about Travis and them and Triple X, rest in peace, or Playboy Cardi, where they keep using like the energy and the, and the idea of well, them dudes play with the devil, dog. Yeah, and and I don't, and that's my I'm point. Not I think, this, I'm, not make, I'm not making this about that, but they do, and um, uh, and I, and I, and this, I, I think, I w- what I would like to believe, no black people play with the devil, but that's probably true. But what I do believe is they're a lot like Pete, where they don't believe in it, but that well, don't easy, mean other people person. believe in it. Well, easy, easy, he was a known Satanist. Yeah, I don't. No, that's true. No, I'm telling. I I'm, never I'm knew that. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I've heard this from DJ Bob Cat. You know, hey, Bob Cat ain't no goddamn Satanist. Dog, I'm telling you, I've heard this from people that work for my heard this. Through my Easy voice. E is not a Satanist. Easy E was a Satanist. G, I'm no, telling he's you, not. G, why do two, three? Why do you do niggas that? Niggas be bro? lying on niggas all the time. Yeah, but three people with the same exact story that don't know each other. G ain't just telling me some bullshit. Man, they don't he have Right. Easy could have fucked them people, ladies and all that. He ain't no, no goddamn Satanist. First of all, Bob don't have no reason to lie on Easy. That was his man. He I ain't no never reason. heard that a day in my life. Easy is but, a Satanist. But no, listen, this is real you shit. You said it's dog. a known fact. No, this is real shit. People that knew him, he was a Satanist, dog. He played with the devil. He worshiped the devil. Had Ouija boards. I'm going to tell Easy, you a story. He did not worship the devil. Gee, why do you do that, dog? I'm going to hang up this thing. You do that all the time. I'm have you seen a nigga worshiping the devil? Dude, I've seen pictures of the nigga with Ouija boards. Have you shit. seen Easy E worshiping the devil? I didn't know Easy E like so that. So then, but- therefore, how are you gonna say I can't say it and you can say it? And I'm telling no, you, just like you believe it, I believe it's not true. No, because I'm telling you something that people that know the man officially, intimately, is telling me, and they don't even fuck with each other like that. They I know niggas me- that know him. I never heard that. It ain't like people lead with a conversation. Oh, by the way, Easy E was a devil worshiper. This thing is relevant to that. Easy how did e- that come up in the conversation? Also, yeah. How did you get to that? 
No, because you we were talking about Travis Scott and some of the little weird. No, no, how the hell up. was you talking to a nigga and he was like, you know what? Easy, he used to worship Satan. That's crazy. No, he ain't worshiping no goddamn you know, Satan. We were talking about Bone Thugs and Harmony's early artwork and stuff. We were talking about their music, and that was Easy's idea. Easy was the one that gave him the idea for that imagery and the song, Mr. Ouija, and all that stuff. That was his idea. I'm gonna tell you a story. I need, I need, I need, I need crazy to confirm that. Dude, he can ask you. Bob, can you, so you call him Bob Catalyar, you call him Go right Michael now. Lyle. Yes. Is oh, that okay? Love, I call Go, I call Bob. Yes. No, it's going because you just disagreeing again just to be fucking disagreeing. These dudes ain't got no reason to lie. You don't easy. think this shit's serious? Are you accusing the namesake of this show of being a troll on his show? Is no, that he's a troll. Because he, he just he, he disagreeing just to fucking disagree. Bro, just, you are calling somebody in in the in in a, in a battle of black folks. You're calling them literally the worst thing you could call a black person, and I'm going too far. Easy E was a devil worshiper. You ain't dog. never seen it. That's not true. I've had people that whose words them niggas just, is lying. No, so Bobcat is lying. It on ain't Easy. the first time in their life they told they, a lie. They just lying on poor Easy. They so just, is it, oh. so so the only lie. So Bobcat ain't never told a lie. A, Mac a ain't question. never told a lie. Never. Question. No, I don't. Think what about did this. they, they stand don't have no to gain to. from that lie? Usually That's people lie saying. to gain something. They don't have no niggas lie for the conversation. No, because it's not like Bob. I'm going to wow. tell you, Bob wouldn't even... This was a private conversation me and Bob was having. Bob wouldn't even the type of dude that would come on the show and talk about that. He would probably laugh about it and say, well, yeah, he like doing his thing. You can ask Ren. Ask Ren. I'm going to make sure I ask Ren. Yeah, ask, 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 ask Ren about it. Ask Ren about it because I'm going to tell you a story. And this is what we were talking about. Go Mac was talking to me one day. Easy had went to the... Um, Easy had this Ouija board he fucked with. Ren came up to Easy when he was fucking with the Ouija board, took that shit and broke it. Like, like literally broke it. They said Easy looked at Ren like this, got up, went to the back of his car, got another one, and went right back to the fuck doing what the fuck he was doing. This motherfucker had a arsenal of Ouija boards in this thing. And this arsenal of Ouija boards. He had a motherfucking arsenal of Ouija boards. You don't even know. You just spreading bad gossip no, on probably one of the that. most important people in the history of motherfucking hip hop. And you just spread rumors. If you out there, confirm this story that I'm not lying. Man, Ren gonna confirm cuss you out. He throwing his name lying on Ren. No, Ren ain't gonna cuss me out because it was the truth. The nigga played with the devil. Man, that uh, nigga ain't no say worship and he ain't played with the devil. I, I shouldn't be saying he was saying this, but he played with the devil, Gene. Glasses. He really played with the devil. Hypothetically, it's just a hypothetical question. If Ren were to confirm this, what would your reaction be? I'd be in disarray. He would still, he would still doubt it. He would say, "No, you're lying." If Ren, if Ren says glasses, if MC Ren says, "Okay, Travis Scott being the same," you said he's Travis Scott playing with the devil. You never even met Travis Scott. So I didn't say that. I'm saying they say now this is whole different. I don't know about what Travis Scott's religion. You don't know what Easy was doing, but this is not the point. The point is, yes, if MC Ren says, "Yeah, glasses," he was a Satanist. He was playing with the devil. I'd believe it. We're gonna get him on Instagram live very soon, hopefully. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know why it's to the rim. Actually, let me call Go Mac right now, man, because you pissing me off. No call Go Mac. We'll do this another time. We could do this on, on we could do this on conversations in the wild, church on Sunday. Wasn't there also because, kind of some kind of like some vibe know, about Jimi Hendrix back in the day with all that shit? Yeah, because you know I can get motherfuckers on here, dog. I can get motherfuckers. Oh, no, just have them come on. That's cool. That's the best part about this. Our relationship could go. So church on Sundays. I'm about to glasses go issue a public apology for calling everybody. One hundred percent. I will one hundred percent apologize to every one of them if somebody comes on this motherfucker and say Easy E was a Satan. Awesome, dude! Church on the first episode of Church on Sundays is going to be involving the Church accusation the of a Satanist. Yes, this is poetry. Can't write itself better, man. You guys are good. You've been planning this well, for see, weeks. But, but, I but, can but, see it. No, trust me, we haven't. We haven't, but this is my point, right? And that's what I'm saying. Like, still is a brother. Like, he from Cleveland. He from like one of the blackest places in America. Like, when you talk about black black people is in, in in Ohio, the Midwest. So, the way we feel about it and the way we spread that conversation, we spread it. Like, bro, that's crazy. So I'm hearing niggas saying Travis Scott and the Satanists. Now, for me, it's like. I'm really careful with saying does Travis play with the devil. Oh, and then look what I just found. The DOC. We, we, we finna focus. We finna focus. We finna, fo we, finna, we finna focus on this right now. We'll do that another time. 
focus yeah, on this I'm right bringing now. All, I'm bringing all my stuff. We go expose. Okay, you just bring all your goods, and I'm gonna bring all my goods. Next episode, right here now. The next I'll episode all is gonna be all about sat- Satanist and rap. Nope, we gonna do that for, for we gonna do that for uh, oh, conversations yeah. in the wild church. Oh, so the point I'm saying is, but that's how strongly we feel. Like we feel that strongly about the spiritual battle that we're in. So you have the whole black community, my culture, right? They're like, so you got the white folks hanging him like, oh, it's his fault. He should have blah, blah, blah. Even though they know better. If you've ever seen these festivals, you know how this thing go. They can go bad. And it's not because it's a lack of security. It's just sometimes human beings get out of control or are forced out of control. Right? There's an expectation of, of behavior. It's like Studio Fifty. It's, it's like somebody fucking in Studio Fifty Four. That's why exactly. they. That's, that's why they you, went. That's why. That's why you went. You went to we come there out. Looking for pussy. Is man, my partner, Pete. Yes. So, cause so my point is right. So for our community to help, right when they're going to railroad somebody in the culture, right? I'm hearing motherfuckers like, man, Trav sacrificed them people. Like niggas is really saying that, bro. A oh, Trav sacrificed them people. I'm telling my boy, I said, we're watching Trav get sacrificed. Right now, it was a shooting that happened in New Mexico. They were shooting a film with uh, oh, yeah. Alex Baldwin. I have watched his PR do the most amazing job of disconnecting him from the actual shooting. So well, even today... Fault. Which is pretty good since he was the one doing it. That's a pretty... What do you mean PR? it's not his fault? I want those guys as my PR. Are you talking about, we're talking about the set of that movie, right? Where they gave the man a loaded handgun? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, that's his, that, well, that guy that gave him the gun has been fired from a job before for, for doing the same shit. I don't understand how you give a loaded handgun to a man on a movie set. Twice. So it's, like, it's like, if and he did it twice. So if we're doing a movie, G, and you have Russ, this scene. The film is called Russ. I know. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. We spoke about it on the Gangster Chronicles. I can't wait for it to come out. So you think about it like this, right? We're doing this movie, right? Me and you, we doing a movie, G, right? We got fake guns. If I give Peter a gun and say, okay, in this scene, Peter, you have to shoot glasses because you're the crooked police officer because you're the white dude in the crew. You're the only white dude in the crew, so you got to be the crooked police officer. And Peter pops that gun and it shoots you in the leg, G, and it really gets shot to find out it's a 22. That's my fucking fault because I gave no, people. Guns. It's both of y'all fault because actually on every gun safety law, right? They teach you to grab a gun, check it, pull it out, <laughs> look for things. They tell you that. What are you talking about a movie set though? It was that don't check. It's still a gun. It's a now, I'm not, I'm not, gun. now I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's Alex Baldwin's fault for what happened on the set Alex, of, well, of Russ. Probably not licensed. In any way, shape, or form, to handle a firearm, right? In so the I'm wild. saying, rest in peace to Helena Hutchins. I'm not saying it's his fault. What I'm saying is, just as well as it's not his fault, right? It's not Travis Scott's fault. People are put in this realm, right? You have a whole like he can't be the security fucking tool. He can't like just like just like Alec Baldwin cannot be the gun safety guy. His job is to go out there, deliver the lines, make the actions happen with the gun. You hired other people. Travis Scott's job is to go out there, deliver his performance, make people feel good, get his money and go. That's like their that both old Cat Williams set where he's talking about the drug dealer has to be the security, the salesman, the, and he's doing all the jobs at once. Every job. That's why you get paid the big bucks. Yeah, That's when the big bucks start rolling in. So that's all <laughs> I'm saying still. It's like as our community, right? We're bullying him and, and we're helping the powers that be, right? Like like Pete said, the billionaires. Man, we're not really... I, I don't see him being ostracized by a bunch of black people. He's being ostracized by the media. No, and black people. There have been 30 clubhouses in the last 30 minutes saying Travis Scott is his well, fault and he's a station board, but he sacrificed these people. It's like this is a Man, manufacturing thing. You know what? I'm going to tell you a quick way we can get a million views tonight. If we went on there talking about Travis Scott and the Illuminati is behind this mass sacrifice, now there's some bullshit. Those people, man, it was an unfortunate incident that a bunch of people died, and we don't have to demonize every fucking thing that happened. Sometimes bad shit just happened. It don't mean it's a spiritual force at work. It don't mean there's no other nefarious activity going on. It's just a bad situation. 
and it look, don't look, mean it and it don't mean it's not look but at what's don't happening. do it in front of the white people look at my like my my motto for everything in the universe is follow the money right so let's really really break the engineering down on this live nation is a big media company what do they do they advertise their shit with big dollars through every other major media outlet that you can think of. So there's big money business relationships in place with all those media companies. So what do they want to do? They want to make sure that the words live nation and death don't appear in the same sentence in any single one of those yeah. companies with whom yeah. they have major money relationships. So they're going to say, if you guys want to keep getting $10 million a month from us each, make sure you write articles because people want to hear about it. They want to hear about it. Make sure you tell them what to think and you tell them that live nation and death aren't in the same sentence. Well, you know what, G, I'm going to tell you something. This goes seem way off base, but I'm going to land on something real quick. This is another example of what the problem is with media, though. Media always Speaking out to somebody who owns a media company. Go ahead. Yeah, but but no, this is true. And this is black owned, like Master P. Uh, but oh, this is your problem. Go ahead. Black go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's your problem. problem. This is my problem with mass media, right? With yourself. Mass media. No, I'm not. I'm not owned by. Go ahead. Any, keep keep kicking. Keep. I'm not owned by we independent black owned like P. Like my <laughs> I heart. Peterson, like I heart. No, we got one show over there. They don't own that. We got two shows over there. They don't own either one of them. They got influence. Go ahead. All right. So check this out. They create these narratives to where that whatever they say is the truth. And that's the way it went. They put it out there enough times and people start believing it. If I go online and say Peter is a um a, is a known rapist, if I go in there and if I have no, enough, not, if I have, please. no, but if I have enough people in my within my range. That lie is going to become somewhat of a fact because people are going to start spreading the word. Then you, I guarantee you, you will have somebody come up and say, some broad that don't even know you. Yeah, he raped me too. They're going to make a video about it and everything else. I'm telling you, bro, they can ostr they can demonize whoever they want to at the drop of a hand. At the drop and, I, of a hand. and I believe that that's exactly why I am. I have pledged my life to being the villain, the super villain. Like, I remember, like, it was a girl that came and did me and Pete podcast. And she said it was a rumor going around that I hit I hit a woman. I was like, yeah, that's what they said. That's funny. She said, that don't bother you? Like, is it true? I'm like, of course it's not true. She said, does it bother you? I said, no, because as a super villain, I could beat a bitch up. There's a, there's an ex there's a theory by a lot of think tankers about how bad media publicity didn't really seem to impact Donald Trump's numbers because he was already in the mud. He's a so fucking super villain. Yeah, you can't see exactly. And you can't cancel a crip either. I am a gangster rapper, bro. If I slapped a bitch, so what? That's what you're supposed to do. That's why That's we're buying I'm the album. I'm disappointing them right now by not slapping this bitch. Yeah, God damn it. What are you just sitting there for? I just need to just walk up and slap. Women just slap the shit out of them, bitch. Yeah, shoot somebody. Right? That's and, how you do it. Did you pay for lunch today? No. Fuck. Well, there you and you and you shouldn't have because you robbed my, that guy for that same square. My money, square, my money is no, my money is no good. My money is no good because I only go to places where villains eat. There you go. That's what I do. I, but that's the point of being a super villain. So the point I'm saying still focus. What I'm saying is, right, is we can't allow, like, we're gonna, we're watching the mainstream, right? I won't even use the word white people to crack it. I won't even say none of that. We're watching the mainstream take a young brother, right, who is a performer, mm -hmm. no different than any other performer, and they're making him the reason eight people died. And not actually just doing their simple mathematics and just looking at the history of festivals. They've it's like, been oh, his bought festival. off. They have been bought and paid for to disseminate a specific rhetoric. And what's the rhetoric? We see that all the time. The rhetoric, the rhetoric? is, you know, the, the tangible target, the face, the name that you recognize. That's the guy. You better say is responsible for this because the nameless, faceless entity 
that doesn't exist, that's fictitious, that's a behind-the-scenes entity that pays you all the fucking money you have is not to be tied to this. Travis it's, e it, it's easy to point to somebody with a face and a name. It's hard well, to point to a corporate money. concept, especially when they're giving you money. If you think about the bread he losing, though, because this brother is being like, he had a show in Saudi Arabia that, Saudi Arabia that he canceled that was going to pay him five and a half million dollars allegedly. I would, you know, and I'm pretty sure this brother's going through some shit. You just don't have an event like that happen without being bothered as a human being. It, it would bother me, G, if we had an event and some kids died and some people died. It would bother us. You know, it, it would bother us. And I think this brother is being sincere with, I think he, his apologies are sincere. And I keep seeing little things pop up. That's what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm actually looking at, at my website, you know, this and bull.com. Make sure y'all go check that out. But um, you don't be trying to dry plug on me and Pete shit. So he's you trying know, to daddy. Plug. What do you think he's gonna do? It's gonna talk it better about be some shit. If you you better yeah. if you bring it up, it better be some real writing. No, now I'm looking at this um, you know, up to the minute news that we report on on this and bull.com and <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug, but no, seriously, I'm looking at where shame. did I find that again? On this and bull.com. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so what's tripping me out? You about, went for Wayne's world on him. <laughs> This shit right here, man, is it, crazy to me because they're saying Travis Scott didn't care. He went to a nightclub and after party right after the event. You don't know. You don't like the thing is what people don't understand when you're a performer. Sometimes you really don't know what the fuck he, is going you on. Don't you don't know. You on stage. Bro, listen, these motherfuckers were standing on people in the crowd. Like there's a there's a there's a brief part of the show where Travis, it was somebody who actually was like either paint, fainted or passed out or was fucked up. He actually had the ambulance come in and stop people so they could get people, guiding them. It's crazy motherfuckers dancing on the ambulance, ambulance while they're trying to get to this motherfucker. Feel me? So again, festivals in that order are meant to be unruly. So he didn't know. He went through his whole set. Question. Another hypothetical. Being the supervillain, what is the supervillain's response if that, like, if that were you? Where's the conflict of the supervillain and the and, and the human element? You know, intersect. Shit, like, man, if that I was did not you. kill him. I did not kill him. Y'all know what y'all get when y'all fucking with the low show. No, you wouldn't say that because I'd be having you a, a, a man. A, I for sure man. would say that. You would. I'm not apologizing for shit. You they even apologize for slavery in this motherfucking country. I'm not apologizing for nothing. <laughs> nothing, nigga. That's the <laughs> point of being a super villain. Imagine the Joker, like I'm sorry. I'm not apologizing, nigga. I'm not apologizing. I told Charlemagne. I had a conversation with Charlemagne. I said, Charlemagne, listen, you're in good space, right? You're in a good space. I said, you were the villain. Now you're the anti-hero. You're not the hero. You're an anti-hero, right? You're not a good guy. Don't ever get it fucked up because the first time you start trying to play hero for people, feel me? They're going to destroy you. It'll Man, be the tragic I hero. I love the second that you serve your purpose. They're going to kill you I again. Actually want, I actually want Charlemagne to turn back kind of a little old Charlemagne. I used to love when he just pressed because people. Now, because, na because now he's in a space where He's trying to be the hero at times. I think it's part of like the therapy and shit. You know, that therapy fucked you up. It kind of gives you like a certain balance and you lose your edge. It's like somebody teaching you how to really cook, right? And you stop cooking soul food and now you're just making like regular salmon. Like, yeah, but it's 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 a flavor about it that we love. But long as he stays the anti-hero, he'll be fine. The first time he starts trying to be a real hero, it's over. And that's the problem. That's where they got Trav at. When, when Trav wrote that apology, do not apologize, bro. Do not apologize to America for nothing. No, you fucking he, don't. He was that's when you let your attorney America, talk. Bro. You don't say nothing. If it's me, this crip, that no, white I man for the talk. Because the thing is, we would be getting, we would be getting, we would be getting wheel on the phone. Your ass wouldn't be saying shit. You would have a gag order. I would have man, your I'm finna be talking crazy to niggas. They don't call me about this punk ass shit. She don't respond to nobody. I would have my people get killed in the hood all the time, nigga. Eight of my friends got killed in 2016, nigga. 
the attorney would be responding for this thing because you go say some whole ignorant shit like what you just said. How is that <laughs> ignorant? You saying eight of my friends didn't get killed? Oh no! Did America I'm apologize saying, for slavery? But gee, we talking about America ever came. This shit is the same shit. No, it's not. It's two different things. This is only because you let it. These some kids of the concert that got killed. This don't. They knew what this shit was. They knew what this shit was. You being insensitive now, bro. A fourteen year old, a sixteen year old kid is going to a concert. Don't have no expectation of the mayhem that's about to ensue. Anybody that fuck with Travis Scott. Know his concerts is right. I just told you about some shit that happened in 2017 where the motherfucker was paralyzed and he rap about it in his song. Who got who got the TV on? Oh, um, I got these loud ass people outside the door. Okay. No That's respect. Weird. None. Are you still staying in the hotel? Are you in one of those shady hotels with the room got roaches? Not roaches, but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got another week in the hotel before I get in this damn apartment. Man, that's crazy, man. That's a sign for you to bring your ass back home. I am home. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter like that. So so what's going to happen, Peter, if, if 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 you get a situation, if your podcast take off and you got to come back to L.A., you would come back then? It's a podcast. I, do it anyway. The show's never been better, and I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Technology, a motherfucker. I, like I said, I... I, I Hit him up. I drove right by an iHeart studio in, I think, New Orleans and Houston. Yeah, they got them in every city. They like 7 Elevens. Yeah. So that's why if you say some bullshit on your show, iHeart throwing you on the cross. Damn right. You think they will? Well, I got I got a doozy for their ass. They might, they might as well get their nails and wood together because I got some shit coming this Monday for their ass. <sighs> And you know, I got some shit I'm going to break on your show, too, because I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to let you deal with it. You like that kind of shit. As long as it's our show. As long as it's the truth, huh? I'm going to come on our truth. show and get hey, our show know, canceled. Let me ask you a question, man. And this is way off subject, but do you think, because you know, Suge and Puff was really boys, right? They was hanging tough for a minute, right? I don't think they were boys from Suge's perspective. I think they I was think comrades. They were, they were cool. Yeah, they were in the same bit. They were associates. But what I heard was that, um, you know, I got the chance to talk to old boy from the source, Dave Mays, right? And he told yeah. me that Puff was kind of flexing at that event. Like, oh, New York and this and that, and kind of taking shots to the West Coast. And that's why Suge said what he said. But Suge's part was shown on TV, so it made him look like the villain. I would love to see that. I seen that I seen that in y'all conversations with, with, with uh, Dave Mays. But I didn't see that part. I need to see where Dave says that. See, I don't yeah, just take you know, I don't just take rumors and then just spread them. Like it's really see, important. You know, that is on the video, but if, if you was a paid um member to see the secret videos and shit, you would saw that part. Hey, man, I'm not paying to get no motherfucking pocket. See, this is that thing. This is that mainstream media you just was talking about. No, I'm saying we got you make already it came on this motherfucker and said Travis Scott and them play with Satan. Devil you know, already came on this motherfucker and said he's he played Satan. Y'all just say anything on y'all show. Y'all just make anything up, man. No, we don't, we don't just say anything. We actually vet our material very carefully. We very, you know. Y'all like the tabloids. This right here is true journalistic integrity with me and Pete got going on. Y'all like tabloids and shit. It's aliens and space and shit. Oh, uh, no, we don't talk about that on our show. We don't talk okay. about that. Hey, but you know what, though? You know what I always did wonder, though? And this is a trip because, you know, Suge was knocking down Puff's baby mama. See? You can't just make shit up. I'm not making shit up. That's true. Hold on one second. Actually, we said on. something about on a podcast a long time ago, before this podcast, like three podcast pilots ago, about a certain basketball player in Main Street said a certain wife. <laughs> you know just what I'm make, talking about. Yeah, but we I'm, didn't confirm that information and deliver it. We recorded it. But we didn't actually say that. We didn't say that happened. Hey, what's up? Hey, Reg, hold on one second. See, no, no, have Reg come on the show. We don't hold do on. this. Oh, I'm going to do something real quick. Hey, no, Reg, how you no, no. Don't Reg be saying hey, anything. Hey, I'm just going to say, hey, Reg, say hi to Glasses in them. Yeah, what's up, Glasses? How you doing? <laughs> Reg, what's up with your triple OG? Glasses. You got to come do the podcast so I can confirm some of this. these lies still is over here telling about what you said. Lies, man, would you tell him that Suge was knocking down? Nah, I, 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 we will talk about it on 
all the time. When you tell this nigga this shit, Reg, Reg, Reg. Reg, See, you don't, don't you get in this. Say, I'm telling you. Reg, don't get in this, Reg. Just I'm wait till you do the podcast. Oh, let me mute G real quick. Hold on. Oh, wow. No, I ain't going to mute, mute you on the show, but, dog. No, we can have Reg come on tomorrow. Reg, you, you want to come on Glass and show tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Tell him this ain't no tabloid shit. This that real shit. We're gonna talk about that know. real shit. I'm one thing about Reggie Wright, he don't lie about none of the shit. He say everything he's saying be 100 and he'll pull some pictures out for your ass. Okay, we get it. That's been out there. Shit, I think Jewel just did an interview talking about that on her on her thing. She did not say that Puff slept that Suge slept with Puff baby mama. While Suge and her was all tripping and stuff. Y'all go listen to Danny Boy and go listen to uh uh, Jewel on Art the Dialogue. They both told that story. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so Reg, we okay. have y'all got a Reg to be on here this motherfucker tomorrow night. I'm gonna call you back, big dog. I believe, so it sounds like a like I mean, West Coast game is an institution. Guys in the East Coast are just doing what they can do to get by. So, Pac took just, down Big's girl, I'm and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spreading those rumors. Those rumors are, are yeah, not necessarily true. Well, you know the one dude be getting fingers stuck in his booty and stuff. Who was that guy? I ain't go. I ain't just go push it out there. I ain't go just go push stuff. We we go do only put episode. only put it out there unless you put your finger in his butt. Go there. No, I, I didn't do that. But there's some niggas out there. Okay, do so it didn't. Shit. So it didn't happen. This is turning so into the uh, the, the exactly. Pepsi, uh whatever interview. No, this is turning National Enquirer. No, we don't do no National Enquirer. Shit. We, we got a John Benet Ramsey segment coming up next. You think you got problems with them sponsors now? You about to have Reggie on your show. That's why I laughed. I said, bro, show clean as a motherfucker. They must I know what the talk. We know we, we know what the we know what to talk to Reggie about. See, we not gonna ask. We don't give fuck about none of that death row shit. We don't give fuck about yeah, none of that rap shit. It, bro, I'm gonna warn you in advance right now. There is no control in the regs. <laughs> He's gonna go off. I had regs on the show for two minutes. You know what he said? The first thing he said, why y'all had that snitching ass nigga um <laughs> on, on the show? You know what you're talking about, right? Me There's no control in the loc, though. Oh, gee, I don't know if you can fuck with Rex. You can talk, dog. No ceilings right here. We out this motherfucker. Still and did it. Gangsta Chronicles. Make sure y'all check that out. All that shit going on. We out this motherfucker. Man, you be right on the hour, don't you? See, you know what I'm going to do?